Okay na sir. Okay na sir. Ayan, hello po. Good afternoon po sa ating lahat. Uh, mag-wait lang po muna tayo ng 5 minutes more po para po makapasok yung uh, iba pa po nating uh, participants. Thank you po. Uh, hanggang ngayon po may napasok pa rin po sa ating uh, Zoom uh, platform and uh, Ito po, kasasin lang po yung ating attendance po for today's webinar. Uh, if meron pa po kayong mga kakilala po or uh, hindi pa po nakapag, uh, nakapasok po sa ating Zoom, uh, let them know po so we can start na po our webinar. So yung mga participants po pala natin is from all over the Philippines po. May nakita po ako dito ang taga uh, Sargao po. Other uh, from uh, Rizal, Cavite. May nakita rin po ako taga Cotabato. Hello po sa inyong lahat. Good afternoon po. Also po from Cebu. And Iligan. Yan. Hello po sa inyong lahat. And uh, to start po uh, our today's webinar po. Good afternoon po everyone. Uh, we are uh, welcoming you all po for our third uh, installment of the Mainstreaming Philippine Disaster Resilience brought to you by the Department of Information and Communications Technology, uh, Regions 4A and 4B. Uh, 
So for today's po, I will be your host po. I'm uh, Kit Sain and Brug po from Batangas. And uh, may ano pa po kung tagasan pa po yung ating ibang participants. Yeah. Uh, mostly po from Calabarzon, I think po. And uh, check na lang po yung ating uh, chat box for the attendance. And kindly uh, fill out na lang po our uh, today's uh, webinar po. Uh, today's uh, link po. And uh, without uh, further ado po, let me uh, read po first the house rules. First po, uh, turn off po your audio video uh, if not necessary naman po. Be respectful po sa ating speaker po while he is uh, presenting. Be interactive po and uh, stay active po sa ating uh, webinar for today po. Also po, here's po our attendance po. If hindi po natin siya ma-access po dito, nasa chat box po, kindly uh, fill out na lang po. And after po, we can, uh, if may mga questions po, uh, kindly use po our chat box. So uh, let me introduce lang po yung uh, today's topic po natin is about uh, climate change adaptation for sustainable uh, development. So ayun po. Uh, first po, let me uh, welcome you po, our uh, Provincial Officer po of Batangas, uh, Mr. Arjen Azul. Po. After po, everyone. Okay. Ako makapag -turn, turn na ng video, ma'am. Okay lang. Sige po, good afternoon po everyone. Uh, welcome po sa ating training. Ayan. And also, I would like to thanks po in advance our speaker, Dr. Miguel. Ayan. Thank you so much po sir for, uh, for sharing. Recording Ayan, in progress. Information mo sa ating mga, magsisari ka ng yung knowledge sa ating mga participants. Thank you so much po sir in advance. And also, I would like to thanks also the, the team, the Gex team of our regional office. Thank you so much. And sa mga participants po, uh, thank you so much po sa pag-attend ng ating training. Sa ngayon pa lang po ay ay na excited na kayo matuto. Uh, kung ano man yung makukuha natin dito. Uh, hoping na ma-apply natin especially uh, these days na medyo prone tayo. Isa, sa, isa tayo sa mga pinaka-prone sa mga calamities. So, ayun po. So, Di ko na patatagalin or pahahabayin pa masyado yung aking message. I know uh, excited na kayo matuto. So sit back na lang po kayo dyan. Relax and enjoy the rest of the training. So handa rin po tayo ng mga notes natin to take notes of some of the important things na didiscuss ng ating speaker na I know marami kayong makukuha. So again po, welcome and enjoy po yung ating training. Thank you so much po. Ayan. Thank you po, Sir Arjen, for the welcome message po. So to formally uh, introduce po our speaker, uh, let me uh, read first po his biography. So he is uh, Assistant Professor of uh, Batangas State University at as of uh, College of Arts and Sciences, a research staff of Birdie Island Passage Center for Oceanography Research and Aquatic Life Sciences, he is also has a 10 years of experience in marine natural products chemistry. His uh, expertise encompasses coral reef ecology, sponge uh, chemical ecology, microbial isolation from sponges, and marine natural product uh, drug discovery. Since 2008, he has been involved in the following projects at the Marine Science Institute, University of the Philippine Diliman, uh, which is the emerging interdisciplinary research project with emphasis on the coast, which is at UPMSI, Quezon City, Philippines, from January 2015 to December 2017 at the University Research 2. And he is also the Drug Discovery and Health Product Marine Component at UPMSI, Quezon City, Philippines, last July 2014 to November 2015, 
uh, as a science research specialist to a pharmacist uh, drug discovery program at UPMSI, Quezon City, Philippines, last April 2008 to April 2012, University Research Associate II. He is a recent graduate of Marine Science Institute, University of the Philippines, Diliman, with a Doctor of Philosophy in Marine Science, major in Marine Biotechnology. His dissertation uh, studied a case of compounds isolated from the marine sponge Calypse ponja samarensis and their allelopathic effect on the hard coral porite cylindrica. In the course of his doctoral degree, Dr. Azcuño worked in various drug discovery projects at the Marine Natural Products Laboratory of UPMSI under the supervision of Dr. Gisela Concepcion. As a research in the pharmacist drug discovery program and drug discovery and health product marine component, he secured the necessary permits from the Department of Agriculture, Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources for collecting sponge samples in the Philippine waters. And this involves linkage between local government units and the local communities in the local in the collection sites. He also handled the procurement of scientific equipment that was crucial for high throughput screening of compound for drug discovery. Let's all welcome po, Dr. Miguel Azcuña, the Batangas State uh, University Health VIP for us. Hello, sir. Uh, you have the floor, po. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, all right. Thank you for that introduction, kid. Okay. And uh, it's nice to see uh, so many people attending here. Okay, so let me just share my screen. Just a second. Okay, so. All right, good afternoon, everyone. And so as, um, as Kit mentioned, so I am uh, Dr. Miguel Espina, and I am the head of VIP Corals Nasugbu, which uh, VIP Corals actually is an acronym for Verde Island Passage Center for Oceanographic Research and Aquatic Life Sciences. So we are a research group of Batanga State University that aims to do biodiversity research in the Verde Island Passage. So again, my talk for today is climate change adaptation for sustainable development. Okay, so first, um, I want to talk about climate change. So for, I think um, we've all heard the word climate change in, in the last few years, and it's been a buzzword um, that a lot of people have been talking and de debating about. But uh, really, what is the root of the root cause of climate change? So the root cause of climate change is actually the accumulation of carbon dioxide in the Earth's atmosphere. So uh, normally, so before the the advent of the industrial revolution in in the 1900s, there's a, there was already a natural greenhouse effect, and this is when uh, solar radiation from the sun. Uh, penetrates the atmosphere, and some of this solar radiation actually escapes into space, but some of it is trapped by natural greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide. So some of this uh, solar radiation is re-radiated back to Earth. Okay? So that is the natural greenhouse effect. However, since the 1900s, with the, uh, since we had the Industrial Re Revolution, more agricultural production, we have a lot more greenhouse gases in our atmosphere. So more CO2, more methane, more nitrous oxide. And the result of having more greenhouse gases in our atmosphere is that less heat escapes into space. So in the area is more of that heat is actually re-emitted back to Earth. And so what are the effects of this uh, CO2 buildup? So firstly, 
is the, like I said, the greenhouse effect. And this results in global warming. So we have uh, warmer atmospheric temperatures. I think we've all noticed that um, it's a lot warmer now than 10 or 20 years ago. Um, but not just in the atmosphere, but also the ocean. So you surface seawater, umiinit then. And so with this uh, increased heat, uh, it creates a domino effect. So what are some of the other domino effects? Yung sea level tumataas. So we have sea level rise, and that is a result of uh, the polar ice caps, which are melting, but it's also a result of increased evaporation because mas mainit, more of the ocean water evaporates and that results in stronger storms. Uh, then the increased heat also results in more intense droughts. And then lastly, so I will explain this more in detail later, but the excess carbon dioxide in the atmosphere also results in a phenomenon called ocean acidification. So this is when the pH of our oceans or of the seawater um, actually decreases palato, hindi siya increase. It decreases, okay? A decrease in seawater pH. So what are some of the negative effects to our ecosystems as a result of, uh, for example, the greenhouse effect, and ocean acidification. So first of all, etong greenhouse effect. So because we have uh, warmer surface seawater temperatures, it can result in a phenomenon called coral bleaching. So um, if you haven't if you haven't heard of uh, coral bleaching, so coral bleaching is when uh, coral reefs turn white. And so I'll explain in the next slide uh, the. The phenomenon of coral bleaching. So the, the corals turn white and they eventually die. Okay. Uh, second phenomenon, second negative effect is what, what I mentioned earlier, the ocean acidification. So this is when you have a decrease in seawater pH. So normally yung pH ng seawater, uh, well, in the early 1900s, it was 8.2. Okay. So that is the normal pH of seawater. Uh, now, uh, in the year 2022, they have measured the seawater pH as already 8.1. So it might, you might say that uh, no, it's a difference, uh, 8.2 per 8.1. But actually, uh, the 0.1 difference na yan is actually a very big difference. It's, uh, I, can, uh, I can liken it to the Richter scale for earthquakes. So when you have, for example, an earthquake na 6.0 and a, another earthquake that's 6.1 or 6.2, it might be a very small difference. Pero actually, uh, malaki yung difference ang dalawa. Kahit, uh, kahit point 0.1 lang yung difference. So uh, they are projecting, scientists are projecting that in the year 2100, the pH of the seawater will go down to 7.8 if um, nothing changes with the CO2 buildup in the atmosphere. And so, so what's the big deal about ocean acidification? So the problem is, is that when you have uh, this ocean acidification, the mga coral reefs, they start to dissolve, okay? Because the mga corals, they use calcium carbonate to make their skeleton or to make their bodies. And with ocean acidification, hindi na nila magagawa ito. So you have a dissolution of coral reefs. And uh, interestingly, hindi lang corals yung naapektohan nito, but other calcifying organisms like um, shell mollusks, for example, uh, pearl oysters, and also some sponges. So it's... Um, it's kind of scary to know that by the year 2100, we might not be able to see any more corals and uh, even some pearls. So pearls might not even be able to be produced anymore by that time. Okay, so this is uh, coral bleaching. So if you look at the image on the left, so this is a healthy coral reef. And then when it bleaches, so this is what it looks like. It turns white. So why does it turn white? So yung healthy coral, 
meron siyang tinatawag na uh, symbiotic relationship with uh, microscopic algae. So yung algae na to lives inside the coral. And then through photosynthesis, gumagawa siya ng pagkain, binibigay niya sa coral host. Now, when the water temperature exceeds what the corals can tolerate, normally yung corals kaya nila up to 31 degrees Celsius. But if the water temperature reaches 32, 33 degrees Celsius, yung nangyayari is the coral starts to expel the symbiotic zatale. So, um, nawawala siya, and that's why the coral looks white. Because actually, yung susantale, that's what gives the coral, the coral its vibrant colors. So, ngayon na na-expel yung susantale, so the coral is white, yung nangyayari is, the coral is starving to death. So, unless um, the water temperature goes down, and the coral is able to recover, and obtain susantale again, then it might be able to recover. But if not, yung nangyayari is, the coral dies and then it becomes covered with macroalgae. So this is what you would observe as a dead coral reef. Okay. So next, uh, ocean acidification. So this is what I was talking about. So what you have is the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere gets absorbed by the seawater by, or by the ocean. So it binds with water and then it also binds with carbonate ions in the water. So, nangyayari is, it, this results to two bicarbonate ions. Um, and because of this, yung carbonate ion, wala nang carbonate ions, which is needed for calcification. And so, this is what a coral reef um, degraded by ocean acidification would look like. So, ito yung sinasabi kong dissolution of coral reefs. Okay, so now that um, we know um, the negative effects of climate change, uh, what are some of the strategies we can do to adapt to climate change? So there are three types of strategies. So the first is called the resistance strategy. The definition of it is it's an attempt to keep an ecosystem intact and unchanged. So what is an example of a resistance strategy? Uh, an example would be the creation of marine protected areas. So you know that may mga, usually pag may MPA, uh, people aren't allowed to fish in the MPA. Uh, also, the mga number of people that can uh, visit the MPA are limited. So that's uh, because that's that's because we tr we want to attempt to keep the coral reef ecosystem intact and unchanged. So um, we want to remove as many stressors as possible to the coral reef. So the second type of strategy is called resilient strategy. And this is where, where you actually improve the ecosystem's ability to recover from a disturbance. So what are some of examples of resilient strategy? Uh, we have uh, coastal cleanups where uh, trash is removed either from the beach, uh, kung may mga ghost net na nakakapit naka, naka sa mga corals, tinatagal yung ghost nets. Um, if there are crown of thorn starfish in a coral reef, we extract the crown of thorn starfish. Because these um, trash, ghost nets, crown of thorn starfish are additional stressors to the coral reef. And we want to remove these stressors. And to do that, we need to intervene and um, and physically extract these stressors. So, yun ang resilient strategy. The third naman is transformation strategy. This is where we actually facilitate the ecosystem's ability to respond to a disturbance in new ways. So, an example of this would be uh, coral seeding or coral transplantation activities that uh, aim to input cor new coral colonies in degraded reefs. So um, what is a new way of doing this? So for example, 
normally when when ginagawa yung mga coral ano yun, coral transplantation activities usually mga branching corals um nilalagay sa mga degraded coral reefs but we know now that branching corals like Acropora are more susceptible or vulnerable to coral bleaching. So normally, uh, sila yung mas sensitive sa uh, warmer waters. Whereas, yung mga massive corals like Porites, um, Porites and such are more resilient to warmer water. So they're able to tolerate higher temperatures. So uh, we know now that if we were to do a coral transplantation, mas maganda na mag-transplant ng mga massive types of corals rather than branching corals which are more vulnerable to coral teaching. Okay, okay. another strategy for adaptation uh, would be related to what we call the United Nations SDG or Sustainable Development Goals. So actually, uh, there, there are 17 SDGs, but um, related to this topic are 13, 14, and 15. So climate action uh, is 13. So um, something we need to do is, like I said, reduce the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So we need to reduce our car, what, what we call reduce our carbon footprint. So instead of uh, driving work, maybe you can take a bike. Um, some people prefer to go vegetarian because the cattle industry produces a lot of methane, mga ganyan. And then we also want to improve life below water and life on land. Okay. Now, aside from 13, 14, 15, 1, 2, and 3 are also very important for communities that actually live in coastal areas. So yung mga coastal communities, we want to um, <clears throat> we want to um, we want to attain goals one, two, and three for them. Why? So this is because yung mga coastal communities, they rely on fishing for their livelihood. Okay? And what we want to do is for them to not rely on open water fishing anymore. So we need to create alternative sources of livelihood for coastal communities. And this entails institutional support for knowledge exchange, technology transfer, and also capacity development. So what, what are some examples of alternative sources of livelihood for these coastal communities? So one example is uh, backyard tilapia farming. So um, here you have inland ponds where you put in tilapia fingerlings, and then we know that in three to four months, pwede na siya i-harvest. Um, normally, nasa 200 or 250 grams size yung tilapia in three to four months. And aside from selling the tilapia in the market um, for profit, the tilapia can also be processed into... Okay, so this one here in the middle is... Um, we're making uh, tilanggit. So, parang dalgit na tilapia siya. So, it can, that's, uh, it can be sold um, as a product. And then we can also make smoked tilapia. So, there are many different types of uh, tilapia products that can be produced. And um, if we can convince fishermen to stop fishing and instead uh, go into backyard tilapia farming, then that would be a very viable alternative source of livelihood for coastal communities. Okay, so secondly naman is seaweed farming. So this is uh, Capophycus alvarezi. So it's a type of, um, I think it's a brown seaweed, and it produces a compound called caradinan. So yung caradinan is uh, very important in the food industry because it is used as a uh, food stabilizer. So it um, almost any type of food uh, beer, um, actually even toothpaste needs caradinan as a stabilizer. So um, usually uh, manufacturers purchase uh, the seaweed from seaweed farmers 
to produce carina. So it's uh, again another alternative source of livelihood for coastal communities. Okay, but aside from um, aside from this, other sources of livelihood for sustainable development um, would be uh, ecotourism. So we know that um, mangroves and coral reefs can actually bring in a lot of money from ecotourism. So we actually don't need to um, we don't need to fish or we don't need to destroy mangroves and coral reefs for profit because if we keep them alive. We can actually make more money from them um, through ecotourism. However, this requires increasing mangrove cover and coral reef cover. And in order to do that, we need to be able to <clears throat> assess and monitor these ecosystems regularly, uh, not just for their abundance, but also their biodiversity. Okay, so and then <clears throat> actually another another important thing with uh, increasing mangrove and coral reef cover is that they are actually uh, tidal protection. So you know that um, with climate change, we have more incidences of storm surges from typhoons and such. And having more mangroves and more coral reefs will be able to protect coastal communities from tidal surges. Okay, So it's just an example of um, what I was saying. So, um, so we have what we call the Alwan Citizen Science. So this is a project spearheaded by Dr. Alfredo Liquanan of the La Salle University Brother Alfred Shield Station in Lian Batangas. So the goal of this Alwan Citizen Science is to train um, normal citizens, but by Dagat and LGUs on how to do mangrove and coral coral reef assessment. So this is so that we don't have to rely on scientists because uh, you know, you know, you know, scientists that specialize in this. Uh, hopefully in the coming years, uh, we will have more scientists. But for now, the goal is to train um, normal citizens on how to do these assessments so that they can do it for themselves and uh, not have to rely on institutions all the time for these assessments. Okay, and then next, okay, I will discuss, so these are some of the research projects that are being done by VIP Torals of Batanga State University. So this one is, they call this is the M-BioAssess or Marine Bioassessment Project. So the goal of this project is to do assessments of coral reefs, and also seaweed, seagrass ecosystems in the Verde Island Passage. So, hindi lang Batangas yung um, inassess. So, we, we did Batangas, Marinduque, Oriental Mindoro, and Occidental Mindoro. And so, with this project, so ongoing pa tong project na to, um, we are able to see, to measure um, the cover of coral, seaweed, and seagrass. And we are also able to identify ano yung mga dominant species um, of coral, seaweed, and seagrass in these four provinces. Okay, so this is uh, very good because we are able to get baseline data of, um, of cover and by abundance and biodiversity in these four provinces so that uh, every year we can uh, assess again so that we can see if there is an upward or downward trend in uh, abundance and biodiversity in these provinces. Okay, and then uh, another project, so ito yung mga seaweed naman. So we have another project called Understanding Physiological Vulnerability of Ulva Seaweed, Implication to Green Tide Blooms. So this uh, project aims to look at the seaweed, the ulva lactuta and ulva reticulata, because um, the idea is that um, this ulva types of seaweed can be a bioindicator of um, eutrophication or high nutrients in coastal areas. Okay, And then the third one is um, a study on biological and ecological studies on 
as Paragopsis Taxiformis for Culture, Technology, Development. So in this project, um, we are looking at uh, using this uh, new type of seed, as Paragopsis Taxiformis, for actually Hindi Pato for seaweed farming because the culture conditions are still being optimized. But um, hopefully if it is successful, then the culture of this seaweed can be scaled up for um, for production. And the idea is that uh, this um, seaweed can produce pigments that can be used, um, for example, as uh, food coloring and as uh, additive in food products. Okay. And then uh, lastly, we have uh, the Backyard Tilapia Farming Project in Batangas in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. So this is, uh, um, <clears throat> we train um, <clears throat> we train operators in Batangas on how to properly culture tilapia and even how to process tilapia products for, uh, for livelihood. And so uh, the idea is that the inland pond culture of tilapia would help create food security in rural areas or in areas that have um, very little access to um, supermarkets or public markets. Because as you remember, during the COVID pandemic, um, the supply chain was hampered um, because of checkpoints and lockdowns. So it actually became difficult for food products to reach the market because of the COVID-19 pandemic. And um, by training people in rural areas how, on how to culture tilapia, this would make them less reliant on going to the market or going to the grocery to obtain food. Okay. And then, all right. So for, for sustainable development, another important uh, thing is to have incentives and capacity building for marine protected areas. So um, there are actually award giving bodies that give monetary awards for, uh, for example, the best locally managed coral reef and mangrove MPA. So that's the, what you call the Para Elmar Award. So every two years, um, they, it, it's uh, countrywide. So we, they do a search of sino ba yung best uh, locally managed coral, coral reef and mangrove MPAs. And then uh, here in Batangas, you have the Bravo Awards, which uh, gives an award for the best locally managed mangrove MPAs. So in uh, 2021, so ito yung mga nanalo, so yung Sumilon um, Island Fish and Marine Sanctuary won for the best locally managed coral reef MPA. So this is um, actually uh, this Close to Malabi to Dumaguete, but Sumida is actually part of Cebu province now. And then for best mangrove award, the Prieto Diaz in Sorsogon won the best mangrove ecosystem protected area. All right. And so I just want to end with um, more further recommendations. So, like I said, um, <clears throat> Um, we need to reduce uh, stressors to for areas like the Verde Island Passage. So uh, for that, human-induced stressor stressors, especially industrial buildup, need to be minimized. And it's very difficult, especially now that we are in a build, build, build uh, phase. Um, so in Batanga City, more liquefied natural gas plants are already being planned for construction. And in Lobo, there's a road construction in the coastal area that has uh, resulted in a lot of sedimentation. So uh, just an example, uh, Merong Seaweed Seagrass Bed sa Madabrigo. That is a very expansive seaweed seagrass bed. And then last June, we visited it and it completely disappeared. So we believe that what happened was that yung sedimentation from the road construction may have been 
transferred to that CBC grass bed, although malayo by ocean, by the currents, water currents of the BIP. Okay, and then secondly, we need to increase protection for regions with a very high biodiversity, like the very island passage. And one way would be to create a network of marine protected areas that can um, that can uh, protect these um, these very valuable marine resources. Okay, so uh, just want to end with um, this comic. So. This just shows what the impact of climate change and biodiversity collapse can have on, on society or on humanity. So I think we all, we all have experienced firsthand how the COVID-19 pandemic really had a strong uh, negative impact on our lives. Um, same with recession, but uh, if you thought that was bad, in climate change and biodiversity collapse will have a much, much greater impact on, on humanity than the COVID-19 pandemic. And it's really up to us to make changes as early as now in order to prevent uh, this type of catastrophic collapse. So uh, with that, I end my presentation and uh, you, I'm ready to answer your questions. Thank you very much. Ayun, uh, thank you very much po, Dr. Uh, Azcuna, for that a very informative uh, presentation regarding uh, climate change adaptation for sustainable development. So, uh, hindi lang pala talaga sa, dito sa uh, land yung uh, ano natin, no? yung climate change, more on din sa, uh, sa sea, sa dagat especially our uh, coral reefs. So, uh, is there any questions po? Uh, I have here po, first question. Let me read po. Uh, if uh, meron pa po tayo mga questions, uh, please free po to chat po, to type in our uh, chat box po. We have first po here. Uh, is there any project where professionals may be able to join and or participate in the research activities conducted by BSU, particularly in line with climate change and uh, VIP Corals initiative? I am uh, sorry, it's another question. Okay. Um, so actually, uh, the answer is yes. Um, but hindi pa agad-agad. So we actually have a an activity called Saknuman. So parang citizen science din yan. So this is where we we invite uh, regular citizens to uh, participate in, um, for example, a crowd of thorn starfish extraction or beach cleanups. So yes, so we actually have some activities um, where we invite um, everyone for that. Uh, you just have to wait for announcements so you can actually um, like and follow our, we have a Facebook page. It's a VIP Corals. You can search for it on Facebook, uh, where the Island Passage Center for Oceanographic Research and Aquatic Life Sciences. So lahat ng mga announcements ay pinapost sa aming Facebook page. So please like and follow. And po, thank you very much, po, sir. And so, para po sa ating questions, uh, please like and uh, na lang po, uh, follow po natin yung uh, Facebook page. Here's another question po. Uh, is it possible daw po uh, if we can have a copy of the presentation, sir? Ah, sige, yes. Uh, I'll, I will send a copy to you and then maybe you can disseminate the... I'm not sure how I how I can give them a copy of the presentation. Uh, maybe, sir, you can uh, send it to me na lang po so I can send na lang po sa uh, mga participants natin via uh, email po. Okay, sige. Second question po, uh, kapag po ba nasira lahat ng coral reefs, ano po yung magiging epekto nito? Okay. Um, so, uh, what we know, pag, pag nasira lahat ng coral reefs, uh, it can have a domino effect. So um, that would be uh, one 
uh, very obvious effect would be the collapse of the fishing industry. So, wala na tayong mga kain na isda or actually uh, not just fish but even uh, oysters, clams. Uh, it will really impact the entire food industry. So, and then also it will make coastal areas very vulnerable to uh, storm surges. That's why coral reefs are really very important for uh, humanity. Ayon. And for another question po, uh, is there any alternative way daw po to prevent climate change nowadays since pandemic happened? I think, <clears throat> um, like I said, some of the, alter the ways that we can really um, not stop or slow down climate change is to reduce our carbon footprint. So uh, I think um, we noticed that uh, during the pandemic, when everyone was, when everyone had to stay indoors, um, parang luminis yung hangin natin. So because there was really uh, a reduction in uh, fossil fuel emissions. Uh, but at the same time, uh, na reduce yung productivity uh, economic productivity in all aspects. But um, uh, anyway, uh, I think the idea would be uh, just to reduce your own carbon footprint in your daily life, whether it's by um, um, just biking or walking to work if you can do so, or like I said, some people choose to eat less meat because the the cattle industry is uh, one of the major contributors of methane. So that's actually one way also that we can reduce our carbon footprint. And um, other ways, um, where this is in more developed countries, what they do is they are creating carbon sinks. Um, so you can research more about carbon sinks. But I did a carbon sink. Is, uh, is an artificial system that will take in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. So um, parang it can be a contraption that has um, algae inside. So, so there, you can uh, research more about it, carbon sinks, carbon sinks. Uh, thank you, sir. And for another question, po, uh, what can you say about agricultural ecosystem and ano po problems and possible solution and intervention being conducted in the Philippines? Um, for actually um, <laughs> specialty in agricultural ecosystems, but um, definitely um, agricultural ecosystems, so I think there's a lot of uh, use of fertilizers um, uh, in agriculture and ideally um, uh, it would be good to rely less on synthetic fertilizer so maybe nat natural types of fertilizer would be better but um, anyway um, kasi for what I discussed lang was really for backyard tilapia farming because that is um, that's what I am exposed to in my work no? so um, I think that uh, actually even in for example in tilapia aquaculture uh, some of the problems would be that the feeds that we have to give the tilapia are actually expensive so um, science is looking into new ways to produce fish feeds from uh, cheaper sources, for example, from uh, seaweed and, and such. So uh, we, need, we need to be able to produce um, more inexpensive and affordable feeds for, um, for aquaculture. Ayan, sana po nasagot po. Uh, nasagot po yung tanong po. And for uh, another question po, uh, nakakatulong po ba talaga ang mga old tires na tinatapon sa dagat para daw maging bahay ng mga isda? 
Okay. Um, so actually, um, uh, yes and no. So, so you know, little tires they could provide provide uh, refuge for fish, pero yung rub the rubber of the tires is actually may toxic na chemicals doon. So if if you throw old tires into the coral reef, uh, over time it will leach yung chemicals into the water. And so you're actually slowly poisoning the water. So um, ideally, uh, it's better to um, to throw in, for example, uh, yung mga old cars, yung mga metal na ano, it's, it's better uh, than tires. Or kung pwede, uh, mga concrete structures like reef balls, although those can be expensive. Ayun. So, uh, it has a very uh, good and bad effect po pala. So, another question po. Uh, adopting organic agriculture can be the one way of preventing climate change? Um, I think it can be um, a good way because like I said, you more greenhouse gases. So, one of the greenhouse gases is uh, N2O, nitrous oxide. And this comes from uh, agricultural runoff, um, usually from fertilizers. And um, organic agriculture, um, if it would use organic types of fertilizers, yung, uh, in the synthetic, that, that could reduce the N2O, the greenhouse gas. And so it can, yes, it can help uh, minimize climate change. Thank you for, for the another question po. So very blockbuster po yung ating uh, webinar. So uh, tuloy-tuloy po yung mga questions po natin. <laughs> uh, here's another po. Uh, have we seen any examples po of a destroyed coral reef ecosystem and its effect on the community? How long will it take for global warming to take its toll on its valuable ecosystem? Okay, so actually global warming is already taking a toll on coral reef ecosystem. So I think um, we had a bleaching event just, I think that was last year. Um, but you, the thing with um, global warming, coral bleaching, is that not all, not all coral reefs bleach. And that is because some, some coral reefs have better water circulation. So di masyado umiinit yung tubig kasi nga nasa-circulate ng currents or maybe the water is deeper. Pero in uh, Karatagan and Lian, kasi shallow yung reef, a, a lot of corals uh, actually bleach. And so um, the actually the the negative effect to that was that uh, you would you would have less, um, for example, leisure divers or scuba divers that would go there, and this can have a negative effect on ecotourism. Um, of course, uh, yung mga corals na nag bleach, some of them recovered, but some didn't recover. Um, so as of now, parang he, it's not that uh, obvious yet na kung affect by fishing industry ng coral bleaching. We, uh, we don't have um, valid data yet for that. But definitely for ecotourism, so leisure divers will not want to scuba dive in a reef that's already bleached. Ayun po. And uh, alam po natin talaga dito sa Batangas, uh, Magaganda yung mga beaches po natin. So, uh, yung iba talaga po natin yung mga uh, public, uh, natutuwa pa po sila kasi maputi daw po yung mga corridors. <laughs> but um, they didn't even know na patay na, uh, patay na talaga and uh, <laughs> hindi na po ma-recover yung iba. And another question po, uh, how much chances of success in uh, livelihoods in the, per- in the percentage scale of 10 to 100 percent that presented earlier, the productivity of sustainable development in the marine ecosystem. Okay. Um, so, yung, um, actually, for the backyard tilapia farming, we 
we just started that uh, last year. Um, because I have to, how do you quantify success? So for if I were to quantify success, it would be um, yung perception ng tao. Kasi yung mga tinuruan namin ng backyard tilapia farming, they, some of them knew absolutely nothing about uh, tilapia aquaculture. And so after one year, uh, we, uh, we saw that tumaas yung confidence level ng cooperators in tilapia aquaculture in just one year. And that um, in one year, they were able to feel more confident in themselves and more confident that they are able to actually have a new source of livelihood. So, um, for example, if um, if we had 10 beneficiaries, maybe eight, eight out of the 10 felt that way after. Uh, some, some of the beneficiaries either um, hindi naman talaga interested ganyan, hindi, hindi naging maganda yung harvest nila. So in the end, it really depends on uh, how committed the person is towards um, wanting to learn these new sources of livelihood. And sure, ito po yung sunod ng tanong. Uh, kasi dalawa po ito. Another is, uh, does the marine ecosystem livelihood programs drastically or contribute a factor to prevent climate change? Okay. Actually, it doesn't, it doesn't prevent climate change. What it does is that it um, gives... Uh, capacity development to coastal communities so that they are able to they are able to um, so that they are able to have a good life or they are able to have a good source of livelihood which they otherwise wouldn't have because of climate change because for example climate change um, you have uh, coral reefs dying if they continue to rely on fishing in the in the ocean, after ten or twenty years, kahit every time they go out, wala na sila mahuhuli na isda. So as early as now, we need to give them uh, other options so that they are able to still have a source of livelihood despite climate change. I hope pa na may dinan. Ayun po, so kailangan po talaga natin na. Mag-isip na ng paraan po, no? So, 20 to 30 years from now. So, uh, meron din po pala tayong uh, questions po from our Facebook page po. Uh, can an artificial coral reef help to restore the condition of our ecosystem? What type of artificial coral reef is advisable? Okay. Uh, so, we've, we've seen, I think there's been data na that um, artificial coral reefs, uh, if managed properly, can um, can bring in uh, fish communities like that. It just takes time. It can take maybe from the time it's planted, it can take maybe five to ten five years for the corals to grow. But um, but in in five in those five to ten years, may visible na positive effect talaga. Uh, in some cases, we uh, plant an artificial coral reef, but because of, for example, a very strong typhoon, uh, the, the, the coral reefs were destroyed. That's why um, it's planning. Planning is very important when doing when doing an artificial coral reef. So this is when um, knowledge transfer or institutional support. From, for example, um, my LGUs or Batanga State University, this is when um, very important yung uh, knowledge of mga scientists because we can help um, select a site that will that select the best site for an artificial coral. So again, so your planning and management is very important, and if you have good planning and good management, then you will have good results. Ayan po. So, sana po nasagot po yung ating mga questions. Uh, bali, meron pa po tayong last two questions. Here po, uh, 
Dali po kay Sir Mario Tommy. Is climate change really a major concern to be adopted by everyone or every nation so as to have sustainable development in general? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I really think so. So um, that's why almost, I think, that's why you keep hearing about climate change left and right because I think everyone in every corner of the world needs to know that uh, there is climate change. And so actually there there are what you call climate change skeptics. So there are some people that that think that climate change um, is a hoax or that it's it's not it's not really happening. Um, but of course, we, um, I'm not going to <laughs> go into that debate now. So you can research on that on your own. But uh, I think the, the sooner we know about climate change and what's causing climate change, uh, the sooner we can minimize or mitigate its impacts so that um, we can slow down its negative effects. So the, the more time we have, um, the better. And for our last question, Paul, uh, how far are we, the Philippines, from positively contributing to the climate? Positively contributing to the climate. Um, I didn't understand the question that well. Uh, from our Facebook page, po an kaya but I think um, she can let me try to answer the question. But uh, I think in terms of um, in terms of, for example, positively making positive changes towards uh, climate change adaptation, I think uh, I think. Um, the Philippines is probably behind more developed countries, um, and a lot, a lot, a lot of it is because a lot of people don't know. They they don't know um, what they can do to help. So that's why um, webinars like this are very important because uh, we're able to get the word out and inform as many people as possible. So, um, I, you know, uh, the Philippines, we have, we have a lot of money in the government uh, that, can be, that can be used for climate, climate change adaptation or even for sustainable development. Um, it really depends on how, um, on how our resources are um, distributed towards towards it. So um, I think we've we've started we've started getting on the path, but uh, I think we just need to stay on the right path and get as many people involved as possible. Ayun, I think naman po uh, nasagot naman po ninyo yung uh, question po. I think po ito yung uh, uh, yung movement daw po ng Philippines para mababa yung contribution natin sa climate change. Like what you said po, uh, informing the people through webinars po, I think uh, it's a very good uh, example po. Mm-hmm. Informing our public po. So I think po, we're done with our uh, question and answers. I hope po uh, naintindihan po natin yung uh, naging uh, presentation po. Very informative po ito sa public po natin. And uh, yung attendance link po natin uh, uh, na-send na po sa ating uh, group chat. Uh, for, uh, sir, for the last question, <laughs> kaya pa po ba? Yes, yes. Meron pa po ditong uh, last question po kay Sir James Soler. Uh, if I am not mistaken, some of our marine biologists use stars from trucks to substitute corals, but true, it takes time for it to be useful in the marine ecosystem. But are the materials used as a substitute for coral reefs is 100% safe for the marine ecosystem or 100% deteriorating the marine life and worsening the ecosystem? Are these materials examined for longer times? 
So actually, I don't have um, the exact study now, but it's um, it's well known talaga na uh, yung tire rubber contains toxic chemicals. So some of these chemicals are styrene. So it's um, it's actually a human carcinogen, and uh, also betadine. So these are these are uh, toxic chemicals that leach um, out of uh, rubber tires. So in um, yung time time series study of how much leaches out, uh, I I can't answer that now. But um, definitely that can be searched online. Thank you very much, po, Doctor. As uh, uh, everyone understand, po. And uh, sagot po yung uh, napakaraming tanong po natin for today's webinar. So, uh, yun po, uh, climate change is not all about lang po our, dito sa paligid natin uh, sa ibabaw ng loob po, but also po sa marine natin, especially po sa mga uh, coral reefs po natin and uh, fisheries po. And uh, next po, to present po uh, our city certificate of operation uh, appreciation po let me first read po the uh, what is uh, written on our uh, certificate certificate of appreciation appreciation is awarded to dr miguel ascuna for his invaluable insights experience and expertise shared with the participants of the webinar entitled climate change adaptation for sustainable development of the Department of Information and Communications Technology, Region 4A, held on July 12, 2022, 20, via Zoom, that US platform. Signed by our uh, Regional Director, Cheryl C. Ortega, the ICT Regions 4A and 4P. Thank you very much, Paul, sir. Thank you so much, and also thank you to everyone that uh, asked questions. Yes. Uh, for everyone po, uh, we'll, sing, we'll send po the evaluation uh, link po later on. And um, for our uh, next uh, webinar po on July 14 po, you may uh, register po on our link and uh, scan po our QR code. And uh, sana po makapag-attend uh, din po ulit tayo for our next uh, webinar po. Thank you very much po, Dr. Miguel po. Thank you. Uh, sana po hindi rin di po po natatapos yung ating uh, collaboration po <laughs> for our uh, webinar. Thank you very much, sir. Right and uh, for evaluation link po, here's po the link. We'll type it na lang po. And hopefully po, lahat po makapag uh, fill out po. So, uh, we'll end na lang po. Uh, Siguro later on mga 2.30, I think, for the team. And uh, thank you very much po sa ating uh, steering committee, especially po to Engineer J. Spueto, or <laughs> Rex uh, Focal Person. You may all follow po our uh, Facebook page po para sa mga uh, susunod pa pong mga webinars. Hopefully po lahat po nakapag-fill uh, out po.
Lui, Lupo. Hello po. Uh, thank you very much po sa ating mga participants and uh, we'll end po our Zoom uh, by 2.25 po para po sa mga hindi pa po nakapag-evaluate and uh, kindly fill out din po our, for our next webinar. Uh, thank you very much po sa lahat and have a good afternoon. Recording stopped.